I was here about probably a year, a year and a half, and I had a, a personal assistant who was a prophetess. Now, this is a very interesting relationship. Her name was Nancy. You know how, you know how it is when you work with a prophetess? It's kind of like this. You're fine. How am I? You know? You come in the morning, it's like, you're fine, how am I? You know, it's kind of that, that kind of thing. And so, and Nancy, uh, was, she is a great woman. She's still in our lives. Great woman, but she was uh, super sensitive, like cries all the time. Like literally, when I hired her, like the very first day I hired her, she was, she was crying. And, and I'm like, huh, you know? And I'm married to like Miss Non-Emotional. So I'm like, okay, this is gonna be interesting, you know? And I thought, well, maybe, you know, it might be her season or something, but then she just cried all the time, so. And she cried when she was happy, and she cried when she was mad, and she cried when she was sad. So, and about a week into her employment, she goes, listen, don't pay any attention to when I cry, because I just, like, cry all the time. I'm like, yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> so, I come in on Tuesday morning, which is my, kind of my Monday. I come in on Tuesday, and I sit down, and we're, we're talking about, you know, what the week's going to look like, and, and she's crying. And I'm like, okay, is this a good cry, or a bad cry, a happy cry? A sad cry. So I'm like, okay, so, and you know, she's talking about the schedule, but she's crying. I'm like, wow, this is going to be a tough week, you know? And so finally I say, are you okay? She's like, yes. I said, are you sure? She's like, no. And I said, did I say something to hurt your feelings or did I do something wrong? She's like, no, yes. I said, well, what was it? She said, and she said this to me. She said, Sometimes you don't realize how much people value you. And you don't carry yourself like you understand that people value you. And you walk out of your office and, you, and you're destroying the very people you're supposed to be leading with your words by thinking you're being funny. And I said, did I say something to hurt your feelings? She's like, yes. And so she told me what it was. And, you know, it was just, being, just, it was just bad, sarcastic humor. And and I asked her to forgive me, and I gave her a hug, and it was all good. Like, it was, you know, it wasn't one of those things like, oh, this will probably take two weeks to work out. It was no big deal. And uh, by the way, you know, she'd already worked for me for a year and a half, so this was kind of our, this happened a lot. I didn't think about it. I went, to, went home that night. I didn't even tell Kathy about it. It was no big deal. We had the rest of the day together. She was semi-happy and cried less most of the day. <laughs> And, uh, and so that night, I went to bed, and I fell asleep, and I had a dream. And have you ever had a dream where you can't remember the dream, but the emotion of the dream totally stays with you? You kind of want to go back to sleep, and like, what was I dreaming, right? So I, I, I wake up, I don't know, it's 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, I wake up, and I, and I have this overwhelming feeling like I lost my best friend, like total grief. And a verse is running through my mind. You know, you ever have a song go through your mind? You may not even like the song, but it just goes through your mind. And this verse is going through my mind. It's just a part of a verse. The world cannot hold up under a pauper when he becomes a king. The world cannot hold up under a pauper or a slave when he becomes a king. And I, I knew it was a proverb. I hadn't read Proverbs for a couple years, so I like, it wasn't something I just read. So I'm, I'm half asleep. I feel this overwhelming sense of grief. I'm laying against my headboard. This, this verse is going through my mind. And finally, I, I kind of wake up and I say to the Lord, Lord, are you speaking to me? He says, yes, you're a pauper, a slave who's become a king. And it's, you're killing the very people you're supposed to be leading. And it's time for you to change. And when he says that to me, immediately I'm taken in the morning, to the, back to that morning, to a, in a vision of Nancy, remember, she said to me, you don't realize how much people value you. And you don't carry yourself like you understand that you're valuable. And you're destroying the very people you're supposed to be leading with your words. And so I have this vision. And the Lord says to me, the Lord said to me, do you know why Moses had to be raised in Pharaoh's house? Moses had to be raised in Pharaoh's house. You know, if God asks you a question, he typically has an answer. And I, and I was thinking to myself, Moses had to be raised in Pharaoh's house. How many of you know that story? Like the Pharaoh's killing all the firstborn males and his mama puts him in a basket and sends him down the Nile River. Remember the story? And Pharaoh's uh, daughter, the princess, rescues him and he grows up in Pharaoh's palace. 
And the Lord says, do you know why Moses had to be raised in Pharaoh's house? I said, no, I bet you're going to tell me. He said, because a man who's in slavery internally cannot free people who are in slavery externally. So it was necessary for Moses to be raised as a prince so he could free my people. And then he said to me, unlike Moses, who was raised to be a prince, you were raised to be a slave. And he took me back into my childhood, and I, I won't tell you a long story about it, but just a few incidents. My very first memory of my very first stepfather, he was a very big man. He was a bodybuilder. And I had grabbed some cookies out of the cookie jar and ran out of the house, and I think my mother was married to him for maybe a week. And uh, I, I grabbed some cookies, and I, I was running out of the, the, the house. I was five years old, and, I, and he catches me at the door, and he goes, are you going to eat all those cookies? I say, yes, sir. He said, you better. And I get outside, and I, I, I bite into the cookie, and I realize I thought they were chocolate chip cookies, and they were raisin cookies. I know. Even then, I had discernment. I threw those cookies away. I must have went in back into the house too soon to have eaten that many cookies. And he said to me, did you eat those cookies? I said, yes, sir. He said, no, you didn't. You're lying to me. And he pulled my pants off and pulled my underwear off, and he began to beat me with a buckle of his belt. Blood was running down my legs. My mother was trying to pull him off me, and that scene repeated itself over and over. And he used to say to me, you are the trash that came with the treasure. I didn't marry you. I married your mother. And like the Lord told me, he said, unlike Moses, who was raised to be a prince, you were proactively, on purpose, raised to be a slave. And it's time for you to change, because I've called you to be a king. You know, I don't know how this works, (laughs) you know, how sovereignty and free will work. But when God says you're going to change, it doesn't feel like you have a big choice. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Like, when God says you're going to change, it's like, it feels like, you know, your, it feels like your free will's on rubber band. Like, it's like, whoa, I'm back. Yes, Jesus, here I am, you know. And, uh, and the Lord began to, and the Lord began to talk to me. The Lord began to talk to me about being a son. <laughs> 